It's This Week in Bourbon, and it's the spookiest episode ever. And here's your headlines for October 27th, 2023. Bardstown Bourbon Company's new tasting experience is now open in downtown Louisville. Frank August is releasing two new releases, and Knob Creek now has its Skillet collaboration. But before we get started, here's a quick word from our partners. Do you ever pour yourself a bourbon, swirl it around, and then start struggling to come up with tasting notes? And perhaps you're also looking for a good Father's Day gift idea. Well, you can now solve both with a kit from Nose Your Bourbon. And unlike other nosing kits on the market, Nose Your Bourbon kits feature real ingredients for the most authentic aromas. You can smell real Tahitian vanilla bean instead of some synthetic aroma that's just made from chemicals. So head on over to noseyourbourbon.com and enter code BP10 for 10% off your order. Play Whiskey Wednesday Round 11, The Memory Game. Until June 26, each week you can win one of our 12 incredible grand prizes. Select two doors at checkout, and if they match on drawing night, you'll win that bottle. Not a match? No worries. You still score a Weller 12-year. Every $5 ticket gives you five chances to win, including four weekly bonus prizes. Get your tickets now at give270.org. Charitable Gaming License ORG 0002703. Always find what you love at Total Wine & More. With so many great bottles to choose from at the lowest price, it's easy to find your favorite Cabernet or a new single-barrel bourbon to try with some help from one of their friendly guides. And with every bottle comes the confidence of knowing you just found something amazing. With the lowest prices for over 30 years, find what you love and love what you find only at Total Wine & More. Curbside pickup and delivery available in most areas. Visit TotalWine.com to learn more. Spirits not sold in Virginia and North Carolina, drink responsibly, and be 21. From their bar to yours, Chad and Sarah of the popular YouTube channel It's Bourbon Night bring you their favorite at-home old-fashioned mix with the new Elemental Elixir's Golden Hour Syrup. It's a custom-made syrup with notes of bold black tea, warm spices, and orange zest. All you need is your favorite whiskey and ice. No bitters needed. One bottle makes 16 drinks, so that's only $1 cocktail before you add your own whiskey. They can also be enjoyed in other cocktails or spirits, mocktails, coffee, tea, and anything you can think of. It's crafted locally in Lexington, Kentucky, and you can get your bottle now at whiskeyambitions.com. Hey everybody, welcome back to This Week in Bourbon. Ooh. Ooh, you hear the little scary. Is Free right Halloween. There. It is, it is. And I say this is the spookiest one because we actually have a surprise guest today. Yeah, he's very scary. He's, he's, he's terrifying. Actually, <laughs> he Ryan, is terrified. He's, ter he he's terrified. He's terrified. He's on here. He's, you can see his, you can see his, his face kind of like pinching up right here. But I see sweat beating off his forehead. <laughs> Brian was <laughs> across the hallway, and I was like, Brian, do you want to come join us for this week in bourbon? He's like, Yeah, sure, absolutely. I guess. So, yeah. So, if anybody knows Brian, he is our host on Behind the Pursuit, and so we wanted to bring another and the guy that brings you all the fantastic videos on the bourbon terminology and all our fantastic social media on Pursuit Spirits account. It's the man. And Sealbox. He knows how to use a camera. He is amazing with a camera. He's, he's amazing with a lot of things. Just cameras, one of them. That's, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, there that's, we go. That's what Kenny always tells me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what goes on when I'm not here. But. Well, that's, that's, that's why we get paying them away so cheaply. <laughs> you didn't hear about our Patreon, the uh, the two guys, one, two Glens, one, two, two oh, guys. Yeah, two Glens, one mic. Yeah, two Glens, one mic. Is that what it is? Two Glens, one mic. <laughs> Yeah, immediately. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. But the other cool thing that I do love about this, and, and by the way, it's, it's going to start happening. You're going to start seeing some changes to the website. There'll be like a, a come and visit a section soon for Pursuit Spirits because we're starting to bring in groups now to have them do uh, basically stress test us and everything that we are doing to figure out whether we're doing things right and doing things wrong. So make sure you pay attention to PursuitSpirits.com and there will be a new visit us button coming there soon. But I think one of the cool things that we are thinking about doing, and I'd love to get everybody else's feedback, you go to SeaWorld. I've been to SeaWorld. <laughs> and you go to a lot of these places, and people were like, oh, yes, I need to get the pictures from the day. I can't bring my camera in. I need to enjoy the moment. That doesn't exist in bourbon. It doesn't. It doesn't. And Brian is like amazing. Like the roller coaster pictures? <laughs> <laughs> it shows you got, like, with your cheeks flapping in the wind. Yeah, your hands up. Maybe you just vomited. <laughs> You're just, like, holding on for dear life. But I looked at this and I was like, damn, Brian is an amazing photographer. We should 
put like an option that if somebody wants a hundred dollar photo session while they're getting doing like whatever it is that we're doing, you should have that because everybody wants a badass picture of them sipping whiskey neat of a Glen Karen. And so we'll especially look, in like a Rick House or by barrels or something. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be cool. So that's expect for some new things to be coming even to that that side of things. Yeah, so we've been working on building out a bull out of staves, so you'll be able to climb on <laughs> yeah. it and uh, and get your photo on top of it. <laughs> I like that mechanical riding bull out of staves. That sounds like splinters. Yeah, you got to repair it every t- three times because <laughs> it <laughs> just got to really sand it you down. Sign a waiver in order to come here for a barrel pick. <laughs> <laughs> yep. But you have to do the bull ride after you do the barrel pick. There you go. There you go. Uh, some quick things that are up and coming for Ryan and I. Again, we will be at the Rippy Mansion doing the bourbon sessions on November 16th. You can get your tickets now by literally just Googling it and Rippy Mansion, of course, bourbon sessions, and then you'll be able to find that. Love to see you all there. We'll bring some surprises as well. It's not going to be the same ho-hum drum invitation that we've always done before or presentation instead we're going to bring some are you you discounting our presentation oh cool it's great (laughs) but you know i'm going to i'm going to upsell it a little bit right let's bring some single barrels we'll bring some other cool things that we're working on and maybe even some pursuit united private selects that you can get to you know get the sample yeah so we'll see what happens that'll be a fun night yes i'm excited for that being that historic place that'd be cool and if you haven't had a chance to of course try pursuit united yet and if you're wondering who the, what is Pursuit United, what is Pursuit Spirits, that's also our other company where we have our own bourbon brand. But if you haven't tried it and you're in these areas, go to these whiskey expos and festivals and go check it out. So Whiskey's of the World Chicago is going to be on November 4th. And Kansas City Whiskey Expo is also on November 4th. And the Houston Whiskey Fest or Houston Whiskey Social, I'm sorry, is on November 18th. That's a big one. Yes, I think I said that last week. But it is a big one. Yeah. Just reiterate the fact that it's a very big one. It's a very big one. So everything's bigger in Texas. And plus, it's all of our friends that are in Houston that actually run it. So shout out to uh, Wade and Chris and Todd and all those people as well, because they're I I like to they like to say like, like Wade just shows up. But. You know, Chris and Todd, they do an amazing job putting this thing on. Wade just shows up and criticizes everything, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but he came here to the warehouse or our distillery uh, a week or two ago, got to taste a lot of stuff. So we're making new believers out of people every day. We haven't heard any criticism yet. Yeah. So that's, that's a win. I love no it. No news is good news out of Wade. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, let's dive into a little bit of news. But the first one, I'll do a quick little advertisement is that if you are interested in signing up for the Executive Bourbon Steward Program, we actually have a new code that's out as BP15, and you get a 15% discount on any level of sign up. So if you're interested in doing that, putting a, a getting a nice little pin and a certification next to your name, go ahead and do that as well. Yeah, it's a great program. Through the Moonshine You people, they do a great job. I did the distiller course. Couldn't, couldn't recommend it enough. It's, if you want to get immersed in everything bourbon, it's, it's a fantastic class for you. It's, it's a good learning opportunity. We have, I have yet to do the executive bourbon steward. Only because at this point, I feel like if I do it and I fail, <laughs> like I'll be like, be like this guy didn't know shit. So well, that's probably true, anyways. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I was like, I don't, I don't want to be like the person that's like, we've listened to this guy for five years, seven years on the he podcast. Doesn't, he <laughs> failed the steward class. <laughs> yeah. It was like, don't you like, give you like the questions ahead of time to prepare for it? So there's a lot of things to learn. All right, let's dive into the news. So the first one is kind of a big one, and that's the Federal Trade Commission has asked a federal court to force Total Wine and More to comply with an ongoing antitrust investigation of Southern Glaciers Wine and Spirits. Southern Glaciers is the largest distributor of wine and spirits in the U.S. and is being investigated for possible discriminatory practices in its sales to retailers such as Total Wine in violation of the robinson patman Act and whether it engaged in unfair methods of competition under this FTC Act. The filing late Friday in the U.S. District Court of Eastern District of Virginia asked the court to force Total Wine to comply with an administrative subpoena that seeks documents and other information. The FTC is seeking documents and information from Total Wine to, quote, to determine whether the whether Southern is giving preferential pricing and services to certain favored large chains such as Total Wine that it does not provide to small independent retailers. The agency's staff attempted for months to work cooperatively with Total Wine, and the filing said, but the retailer was unilaterally narrowed the scope, sorry, the scope of FTC's request and refused to search any employees' files for documents. After lengthy negotiations about Total Wine's objections and staff's proposed deferral of certain responses, the FTC said that Total Wine opted to file a petition to limit the information. 
However, in a response to recent media reports, the Retail Services and Systems, Inc., which is actually the the owning company of Total Wine, issued a following statement that we were advised by the FTC staff that neither RSSI nor any of its affiliated businesses or stores is subject or a target of the FTC investigation, which they represented was focused on the wholesaler. RSSI made substantial efforts to cooperate with FTC's investigation and responded in good faith to most of its data and document requests. Given this matter is now in litigation, we will have no further comments. Okay. Well, if you remember, this was something. Yeah, that I thought was, this happened in California. Well, I this has been something I think has been looming over Southern Glaciers now for over a year, maybe less than that when we first announced this. Yeah. But I'm now trying it's to think back. But now they're actually subpoenaing Total Wine to say, "Give us your documents. Show me what you got." Yeah, and I'm kind of torn on how I feel about this because you're a business owner. So well, you, under, you understand what it's like. Yeah. I understand what it's like. Cause it, you think of any other industry, of course, if you're buying more volume, you should get discounts, you know, on that volume. And so, uh, but, but also too, it's hard for small mom and pops to compete against total wine because of that pricing. Uh, I guess that pricing strength they have with the volume. So it's, I'm kind of torn in this. I don't know. It's like a there's a free market side of me that says, you know, let the, but also too, it's it can kind of hurt small mom and pop stores. So you know, I'm kind of torn on this one. The, I don't know much about the Robinson Patman Act, but I see it when I go to Home Depot, when I go to my local hardware store, and I look at the same exact bottle of Rustoleum white spray paint, and at my local hardware store, it's eight dollars and forty eight cents. At Home Depot, it's six ninety nine. I'm assuming that's happening because they're getting a much bigger bargain on the the sure. amount that they're buying, or maybe it's just the thin. Mar- they'd rather work on thin margins and sell in volume. I'm not 100 percent sure, but well, it's just like usually want to give people that buy a lot. Of, well, it's like going discount. to a major chain grocery store versus uh, here locally we have Kroger's, and then. Uh, which are great stores, but I go to Paul's and things like simple items like ketchup. Heinz ketchup is more expensive at Paul's, but I like going to Paul's because they have, you know, better boutique food items and whatnot. And so it's, yeah. yeah. But based on what you just said, I think the difficulty is, you know, if if they're boutique and they have the special in this particular case, sure, I think it's across all things you understand, hey, you know, larger volume, larger break. The the thing is, though, they get, in, they get kickbacks of, of, rare of limited of of getting more pe- like you would think that the boutique store they're not would getting, be able to, they're not getting rare not, ketchup it's not equally yeah, yeah that's yeah. true and yeah. so if if in your example then they had some i don't know 10 year that's true ketchup, a, a bigger you get to <laughs> that's true access to well and yeah bigger you know bigger chains get better allocations on rare limited bottles they get because of that buying volume and they get more single barrel opportunities and so, yeah, I can definitely see that side of it as well. So, Well, I've definitely seen that side of it because I've seen our friends over at Liquor Barn and our friends over at Kroger, when they go and do a barrel pick yeah, at, they, at they Buffalo like Trace, yeah, at Buffalo Trace, I'm like, wait a minute, we only get three barrels rolled out. They have like at least 40 and they're doing everything from Buffalo Trace to Stag Jr. or George, Stag, whatever you want to call it nowadays, Stag Stag. But you look at that and you're like, holy crap. But that is that's the buying power, and I would imagine it makes sense even at a at a level that even that we have as a supplier. It's like you want to treat the people that are giving you the most business. Yeah, uh, you know, you want to take care of your whales. I guess is the best way to say it. Yeah, it's uh, like I said, I, I, I'm torn on this. I, I can't I can't figure out which way. Yeah, I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how it all plays out, though, because that'll I I don't know what will happen but it it'll set precedent for a lot of things moving forward and maybe it's it's not just an individual brand maybe it becomes sort of like a a package deal thing where let's say let's say a a local liquor store just wants to sell the crap out of we'll take barrel bourbon for example like they just want to like promote it and sell the crap out of it however at the distributor level they're like well barrel is also included in our small batch portfolio so you have to carry xyz right. and mm-hmm. zeta and all whatever it is so we're not going to give you the break on the barrel bourbon because you've got to buy it in this big portfolio of stuff right yeah because you you have to take everything else that comes with it and sit on that inventory that might not move or not sell it's 
this whole thing's a whole. <laughs> there, there's a can of worms here that I don't know that wants to get opened. Well, I think you you lifted the lid a little bit, but we don't need to go into it too much. So our next one is looking at the vintage law in Kentucky. We have been a big fan of it ever since it was enacted. However, we start seeing some, I guess you could say, crackdowns or maybe some juxtapositions on how people interpret the law. But Kentucky alcohol regulators are moving to shut down another bourbon seller for violations related to the state's vintage spirits laws. The Kentucky Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control has initiated administrative proceedings to revoke or suspend the license for Doc Crow's Southern Smokehouse and Raw Bar. This is at, and on Whiskey Row at 127 West Main Street in Louisville. And they're also owned by the Bertuka Hospitality Group, LLC. A notice for Doc Crow's was filed on, back on August 31st, and a pre-hearing conference was held on October 18th, an indication that the Louisville Restaurant and Bar, which sells alcohol by the drink in its Doc's Bourbon Room, plans to fight the action. According to the case, the ABC investigator determined that Doc Crow's purchased distilled spirits back in 2021, but could not produce receipts to prove where the distilled spirits came from. And they did not notify ABC of all, quote, vintage purchases and was selling some without a vintage spirit sticker and purchased multiple distilled spirits that were not vintage or rather just hard to find. The investigator visited Doc Crow's in November of 2022 and found that the vintage bottles included multiple bottles of Old Rip Van Winkle, 12-year-old Lot B, multiple bottles of Weller 12, and multiple bottles of Weller Antique, with stickers stating Vintage Doc's Bourbon. There was also a menu section on the menu of Doc Crow's that actually said Secondary Market Acquisitions. At the bottom, it also states that everything on this page has been purchased above retail and is hard to obtain. They were also told that the bottles were not considered vintage, or sorry, they were said that the bottles were, but the bottles not considered vintage were put into a secure area, and the investigator told them that nothing was to be opened or tampered with, which could result in charges. However, when the investigator returned a few days later, at least two of the bottles, an older Van Winkle 12-year Lot B and a Thomas H. Handy, had been opened and were missing bourbon, according to the report. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Those bottles were confiscated, and at least one other bottle, an Eagle Rare with a sticker labeling of its liquor barn pick, was also confiscated by the investigator because he knew that Eagle Rare was still made and sold. It's funny how there's a common denominator of the brands that are being, I guess, discussed on these allegations and whatnot. Well, let's be fair. That's what people are chasing after. People come well, no, here because they want to. They want to try Van Winkle. They want to. They want to try the antique collection. That's just what people want to do. So, well, sure, but you don't hear that. You know, they had a. I don't know, Elijah Craig, 21 year from 1996 or, you know, all the other vintage spirits that are in the portfolios of these stores. You know, it just seems to be these these few that are on, on, under one umbrella. It's it's weird. OK, I see what you're getting at. So you think there's some some bias in the and what's being presented, I guess you could say. Yeah, correct. I don't know. I mean, I am I am a big advocate for this vintage spirits law. Like it has to too. happen. It has to happen. Yeah. Because I mean, people come to Kentucky because they want to try all this stuff and they can't go to stores and get it. They can't go, you know, they can go to maybe some bars and get it, but not very many. And so this vintage law allows tourism or tourists to come here and try these rare bottles that that's what they come here for. And if you take that away, it, it loses the lore of the whole bourbon experience, bourbon tourism thing. So I, I don't know. This seems kind of very short-sighted in the whole grand scheme of things, you know. So I, I don't know. I, I think it's kind of... Uh, in my opinion, when I look at this, at you, there was also some reports of what does define vintage, whether it was coming out of the 2022 release or the 2021 release. And, oh, well, it's still the same exact bottle, but it's not in circuit. I don't know. There's been so much gray area with this that they need to define what it is. And yeah, that's I mean, what's, I think, pissing a lot of people off is you, it's there's too much gray area of what is defined as a vintage. And there is also probably not the easiest method of what it is to report this as well. Yeah, uh, I guess. Yeah, I guess they'll just head. At the end of the day, what's what's this all come down to reporting? What is it? What is it, who's reported and, and everything like that? So if you're not reporting it. Well, I guess that's the problem because we got to figure out what's an easier solution to do this. Is there, is it just too much paperwork? Uh, what, what, what does it come down to? Or is it maybe just people are trying to skirt around it? Yeah, but I think it's a thing too where 
it's so new and so gray that people are interpreting it and figuring out as you go. At inst- I feel like instead of just shutting down and taking it away, it's like, okay, this is probably a path that we don't need to take. We need to move towards this direction instead of just like, because I, I feel like this kind of press and publicity just hurts someone like Docs or Justin's or anything. And, you know, they, by reading and interpreting the law, they weren't doing any, necessarily anything wrong. Um, it's just one person can interpret this way, one can interpret that way. Instead of being like, oh, they're being shut down by the ABC, that sounds very harsh. Like they're doing something very illegal and they're, yeah, like and they're like where, where's legging or moonshining. And where's the reality? They're just, you know, interpreting the law one way and somebody's interpret and, and and so I think we just need to like like let's like let's lessons, not losses. Let's take lessons and make it and change the law accordingly and, and move forward with it instead of just doing these like negative uh, attacks, I guess, against these places. You think they should have something formed and, and present that back to all the places instead of acting for Exactly. Yeah. Like uh, what can we do to make your job easier? Yeah. I mean it, uh, precisely. <laughs> yes. I mean, right, let's let's keep this train going while we're just on a on a, on a bitching tangent here. So, <laughs> the 2023 direct to consumer spirit shipping report from the global tax compliance technology leader Sovos and the American Craft Spirits Association underscores a continued increase in the percentage of regular craft spirits drinkers who want to legally purchase their beverage of choice via direct to consumer shipping. The 2023 direct to consumer shipping report found an increase in regular craft spirits drinkers who want to legally purchase their favorite spirits and products and have them shipped directly to their home. 87% versus 80% in 2022 and 81% of those likely to purchase spirits direct to consumer say that they could purchase craft spirits direct to consumer. They would do so at least once a month or more, more than four in five around 82% of the people that were proposed here that say they're regular craft spirits drinkers believe that U.S. laws should be updated to make it legal to ship spirits direct to consumer in more states. For the 2023 DTC shipping report, the Harris Poll conducted an online survey among 598 regular craft spirits drinkers who were 21 plus or older who drink craft spirits at least once a month or more often and on behalf of Sovos and its ship compliant business. As of October 2023, there are more than 122,000 spirits brands in the U.S., over the wow. past few years of the TTB approved between around 13,000 and 16,000 new brands. However, DTC spirit shipping is still only legal in nine U.S. locals, eight states and D.C. with recent failed le- legislative progression in New York, Texas, and Hawaii. Sovaso's 2023 report found that 80% of craft spirits drinkers, which, uh, which is up from 74% in 2022, said they would purchase craft spirits from out-of-state distilleries via direct consumer shipping if they could do so. Yeah, who wants to go first? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk to the guy that deals with some of it on a on a regular ba- daily basis. I mean, just shipping in general needs to get fixed. Yeah, it's it's wild. I mean, I think that I think it's the benefit for some folks, but at the same time, I think that it, it's at least on our side. The thing that that frustrates me the most, I think, is is constant changing, and, and it you know you'll have somebody who. You can ship to for one reason or another, and then and then you can't. I think that's more frustrating than just can't all the time or can all the time or, you know. Um, well, because they're changing the laws as they write them. And yeah. if somebody wants to go appeal to the Supreme Court and they want to go look at this and they're like, oh, this one in Tennessee, it passed. And then they go, well, this one in Ohio didn't. And who's who's right here? And I don't know. I think the problem that the, the thing that I hate about this the most is wine. Oh, yeah. I just coming fresh off Napa. I mean, they they have such an advantage that they can ship pretty much to every state. And and I think the law there is if and I think it's a fair one is that if a brand is not distributed in your state, then you can ship have it shipped to it. Or if a brand has a SKU sh- distributed in their state, but they don't have certain SKUs, you can only ship those SKUs to your state. That's the way I understood it when I was there. I may be wrong. I don't even care about the uh, SKUs. I was just say, like, figure out a way. That if well, we if we want to ship to Michigan or California or Florida or whatever it is, like at the end of the day, what's this come down to? Taxes. People want to collect their taxes on on what they sell at the shelf, and that's what the state gets back because this is this is a sin tax at the end of the day. So, well, I think it comes down to distributors and retailers too. That well, but, but yeah, they can play a part in this. And okay, yeah, they they play a huge part because we're cutting out a huge margin chunk from them too. But but to be fair, they're not the ones that are. Uh, supporting craft brands, you know, they, I mean, oh, you said it best. <laughs> they, they, 
and they'll take the incentives from people that can pay for it because brands like us, we can't go into O and D and say, Hey, we're going to throw $20,000 at the state of Washington to make sure that we can get more placements or we can get more pods, which are uh, points of distribution or just to get, I don't know, a bigger sign in the store. That's what they have. They have that, that, basically that money to just squash anybody that's small. Yeah, I, I think a fair approach is if, you know, if you have a, a like a flagship line that you do distribute in state, but you have limited releases that aren't necessarily that you should be able to ship those. Um, and or if you're not distributing that state, it should be able to ship to the to that state. Because um, it, it, it's hard for a brand to say like, oh, well, I have these. So you have a, you know, a thousand fans in a particular state and you're like, well, I want to open up distribution in Michigan because I have a thousand fans for my email list that came to my distillery and visited. But it takes a lot of money and effort to go just sign up or go, you know, register with the state, deliver a thousand bottles. You know, a distributor is going to be like, thousand bottles, that's it. I'm not taking that on. Yeah, you they know? don't want to deal so with that. It's just a huge disadvantage for the spirits industry, whereas wine and beer can really uh, capitalize on this. And it, it it just needs to be a level playing field, I think. because. Because the, the craft guys, we have a, a very hard time competing in the traditional distribution model. And totally. that can remain with this, but there definitely needs to be some updates. Oh, there's we've always said before, traditional distribution will not die. No. Yeah, it's not. still plays and a I, very I don't think integral it needs role. To. I think there's an important role in it, but it only benefits a few versus everyone. Yes. Very true. Any more thoughts, Brian? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a it's it's it, well, it's something I'm still trying to wrap my head around, honestly, because I interacted with it all the time. I think I, I, I haven't quite, I haven't quite formed an opinion on it, honestly. All right. Well, I know you have an opinion about the next one because oh, we, gosh. me and you have visited it, but Ryan is still yet. So Bardstown Bourbon Company, their new tasting experience is now open in the heart of downtown Louisville on the storied Whiskey Row. As the modern bourbon experience, a Louisville tasting room will feature highly interactive education innovative craft cocktails, augmented reality in an immersive digital environments and curated cocktail, sorry, curated retail merchandise and exclusive bottles. The new experience is located at 730 West Main Street, which anchors the west of in Main Street, just past the 21C Museum Hotel and a block from the Fraser Museum. And it enables customers to experience the brand in a variety of ways. In true Bardstown Bourbon Company fashion, the Louisville Tasting Room features a full service bar with innovative craft cocktails and unique tasting experiences. The fresh, modern environment matches their expertise in blending, finishing, and whiskey making with an immersive digital presence as well. Barstown Bourbon Company worked with international agency 3 Rock AR to create a 3D engagement as you enter the space, showcasing the family of brands. Hidden augmented reality elements also showcased throughout the space, created by local experimental agency Human X, and that will tie back to the state of art distillery back in Barstown, Kentucky. The tasting room will offer three distinct educational experiences ranging from $25 to $35 per person and last up to around 40 minutes. The first is the collaborative series experience that showcases some of the most innovative and complex whiskeys in the market, discovering the influence of barrel finishing in partnership with leading producers in a variety of spirits categories. The origin experience showcases the brand's 100% estate distilled flagship products. And the Art to Blending experience explores the sensory characteristics of the unique bourbons of the Discovery Series, setting their aroma, flavor, and finish. Reservations are encouraged and can be booked online at bartsonbourbonecompany.com slash plan of visit. Let's be clear. The only reason I didn't go is because you didn't, you put it. <laughs> He's he, in the wrong calendar, apparently. He, he puts it in his personal calendar. And, not, and so he, he, Uh-oh. Kenny arrives there. He sends me photos. And he's like, I'm where, like, Ryan, you're so he's great. He's like, where are you at? And I'm like, what do you mean? Where am I at? <laughs> and uh, yeah, so thank you for that. But if, if it makes you feel any better. You know what the question of the night was? Where, where's Ryan? Yeah, exactly. Like, where's make, Ryan? It makes me feel good. But that's that's why I wasn't there. So, means nobody gives a uh, shit about me. So congratulations to the whole team at Bardstown. We love them, obviously, because they're distilling partners of ours. But uh, future neighbors too. Future neighbors. They're we've already announced that. It's funny. I we we looked and got our space first, and they beat us by a year. So uh, <laughs> that's kind of frustrating. But uh, uh, but it, it's exciting stuff for them. I'm curious. What's the augmented reality? So like you're in there and you feel like you're in the distillery. Yeah, I didn't notice that. I learned about this last night when I was there. Apparently they're still putting up some signage, but there is, if you look at one of the bars and you look to the left side, there's this wall and there's a big QR code there. And so you can scan this QR code 
and you basically get like a hidden webcam into the distillery room and you can uh, see the still going. Do they have any webcams and barrels? Yeah. <laughs> like that one the, the, the one that's sending at the space? No. Remember that one company is like, you can have a webcam in your barrel and watch your barrel mature. Oh, yeah. And I was like, <laughs> You're like, oh, God, watch paint dry. <laughs> yeah. No, but they have, apparently they have hidden webcams at, at Bardstown and now we know about it and that's your way to see what the there should be one in Dan oh, Calloway's no. office I don't want to <laughs> yeah. see what goes on in there uh, but the collaboration series I was excited to see that because I'd heard our collab with um, you know they gracefully describe who they collaborate with and we fall under that umbrella uh, but I was excited to see that they still had some Burn Pursuit collaborations the shelf. there so because uh, they had I had heard they had sold out at the main gift shop there in Bardstown so there may be some left there at the downtown location they held back a few cases just for this release and, and I, I haven't had some of it, but the Doisy Daisy one, I, gosh, I love that one. That one's really good. You know what I found out really interesting about our collab versus every other collab? We've always received samples for every collab. <laughs> yeah. they, I don't think they sent out any media samples for our well, collab. Well, they gave me, they gave me like two cases. Well, so. they gave, no, they gave you, they gave you, but I'm talking about in general about what went out to market to. Oh, ours didn't go out to market though. It, ours is a gift shop only. Well, did all of have all? Yeah, all the other them? ones go to market. I oh, think. so you just didn't make enough? Is you trying to tell me, sorry, right? son of a gun, Jesus yeah. Christ! I know I'm very particular about what I put in bottle. <laughs> so good enough. at blending, I just did not make much. <laughs> then nothing. It just wasn't good enough. Hey, I just I just did what tastes good. Sorry, it's all right. I think you, you're learning the model. You make it very limited and hard to get, and people got to chase right. it for the next one. That's taking the Napa model. Very well, taking most bourbon release or models. any alcohol model. Yes. People just like rare and limited. No, well, that's just like my personality. Yeah, but I, I'm excited to see it. I need to go stop by and check out. Yes. You, I think I'm actually going to go it. tonight. It's our anniversary dinner, so we're going to go beforehand. Happy and anniversary. Check it out. Thank you. Hopefully they... Uh, they it's year 11, so no one cares about this <laughs> one. Ten, <laughs> 10 was a big one. Hopefully they greet you with a nice cocktail. They had, I think it was a carrot cake old-fashioned oh, they had last night. I like carrot cake. What, what, that cream cheese icing in it? <laughs> they should have. They should probably put that on the rim. <laughs> so what would you think of it, Brian? Well, they didn't have any carrot cake old-fashioned for me. They it's just spots at the bar. Uh, yeah, I, you know, it's, I don't know. I, I, I'm actually really interested to see uh, how it continues to do for folks. You know, I went there, it, it, first day opening, wasn't super busy. But I, I think I Bardstown Bourbon Company has just built so much about the the physical space of that they had in Bargetown about you know we started with the restaurant and then we, we started building all these dealers around the, or the the brick houses excuse me around it and it's all part of it so then I went downtown and there's a bar it's beautiful right it looks like Bargetown oh it's super modern They're, you know they they carried on the moss wall inside there as well absolutely did they transplant some from Bargetown <laughs> yeah they, they let it germinate yeah ton tons of bottle. Uh, tons of bottles there. So like having access and having access to try going through their expressions is great, which, you know, is likely what it is. But there I couldn't help but feel like while sitting in the bar, there's just something missing that that is I feel like is grander about Bargetown Bourbon Company in general. So most people may well, not Was it that. the chicken sandwich for lunch? <laughs> is that what you were missing? Fried chicken sandwich. Yeah. Or no, the, you know, I, it was that poutine. Yeah, it was the it. poutine. I, you know, I am a big is. fan of poutine. They didn't actually, they didn't have the barrel-aged cocktails able to purchase either. Yeah, I like The that. other one, you could go and get some to go. And so I'm like, hey, you know, oh, this would yeah. be great. I can drive down there, grab a couple of containers. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> no what you luck. need, containers of old-fashioned barrel-aged. Yeah, the Dan Galloway special is what I call it. Yeah. You order. But I think the goal with that is, is like, they don't want to make it parts town but there's so many people that come downtown you know for work or this that they might not have time to go but at least they can come experience 100%. come experience it there you know they might just have an hour or two whereas they don't have the time to drive to bars town and so they can capture that customer that's here just on business or for a wedding or this or that might be just here for a day or two and and uh, just to get them exposed to the brand and then next time they can you know head down to it'll just be the the kind of the carrot they dangle you know well and it was nice too uh, you know they they when i order to pour like you know do you want a half ounce ounce and i was like hell i always feel bad ordering in a half ounce but when you go to a place and there's there are actually a lot of newer collabs and stuff i hadn't tried yet so being able to try a new discovery and several of the collabs they had a single barrel release there it was it was really nice yeah i like to try a lot and i didn't have to leave stumbling on the sidewalk b <laughs> bumping into boomer's canteen <laughs> <laughs> boomer's canteen yeah AKA Pursuit. That's the Pursuit Palace. Pursuit Palace coming soon. It's yeah. Twenty four. Half ounce. I do like the half ounce option because you can try a bunch and it's much more affordable to to try those. Yeah. And you're not stumbling now. And you're not stumbling. 
Uh, well, let's go ahead. Let's take a quick commercial break. But we'll be back with some bourbon release news. If you're anything like me, then you can't get enough about bourbon. And that's why I'm a subscriber to Bourbon Plus magazine. Bourbon Plus is a quarterly publication that tells the stories from the heart of bourbon. The farmers who grow the grain, the distillers who labor over the process, and the people like you and me who raise their glasses to celebrate it all. Subscribe to Bourbon Plus magazine today at bourbonplus.com, that's P-L-U-S dot com, and use code PURSUIT at checkout for $5 off your subscription. Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. Shopify's point of sale is your command center for your retail store. From accepting payments to managing inventory, Shopify has everything you need to sell in person. And with Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers in line and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. And get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's point of sale Go Mobile device for a battle tested solution. Plus, Shopify's award winning 24 7 help is there to support your success every step of the way. Do retail right with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash bourbon, all lowercase, and go to shopify.com slash bourbon to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash bourbon. Hey everyone, it is Bourbon Pursuit, and this is your bourbon release news time on This Week in Bourbon. We've only got a few of them to go through, so let's get into it. The first one... I got this press release and I was, honestly, I thought it and I was like, you know what, if you're in the New Hampshire area, I think you should just go ahead and check them out. If you're not in New Hampshire, you're probably not going to care about this. But listen, Flag Hill Distillery, they're releasing New Hampshire's first ever 10 year old bourbon. So New Hampshire's oldest distillery is about to release a bourbon that has been a decade in the making. This only two barrel batch was first fermented, distilled, and barreled at Flag Hill in September of 2013. The bourbon has been pulled from its decade long home in the Rick House on their property in Lee, New Hampshire, and prepared for bottling. The first opportunity for the public to taste this new whiskey expression will be at a release party to be held on Flag Hill on November 4th. This event will also give guests a unique chance to taste bourbon samples from multiple ages of the journey of Flag Hill bourbon, as well as other bourbon themed elements. The limited release will only be available at the Tasting Room in Lee, New Hampshire. And this is the same expression that is the same base product as their Flag Hill Straight Bourbon Whiskey, which is only available in New Hampshire and Massachusetts, but with an extra six years of age. The mash bill is 21.14.5, entry proof of 100, char number two, bottling at 105.4 proof, only 21.14.5. 71.14.5. Oh, I thought you said 21.14.5. Okay. There we go. 105.4 proof, 277 bottles available total with an SRP of $80. I was waiting for you to say distilled in Indiana. Yeah. No, but this I'm, is. I was <laughs> waiting for you to say $800. <laughs> One or the other. I looked at it and I was like, listen, they they sent it to us. They're, I very rarely put craft distilleries on here, but I look, I was like, listen, these people. It's 10 years. It's their own stuff. Let's go ahead. Let's yeah. give them the love. And so if you happen to be in the area, I don't know. I haven't even tasted it. I have no idea what it could taste like. But 10 years for a craft distillery, this is that's a that's a badge of honor. So congratulations to them. Yeah, to make it 10 years, being a craft distiller in this environment is a, a big uh, tip of the hat to them. So congratulations. For sure. I want to try it. I do too. I do too. So maybe they'll hear this and we'll... See a little knock knock on the door from our UPS man. Let me we're, know if so. I'd like to try it too. Yeah, we're here again. Yeah, I'm sure Sealbox is always looking for another another vendor. You know, but mentioning this, you know, and what you just said too about, um, you know, a nod for making it in this in this type of climate. I think the next couple of years will be interesting because we will start to see profiles change from a lot of these craft distilleries. M you know, maybe you would think they'll, they'll probably Hopefully. keep like new riff. They'll keep it low for their staple, but as it develops, I think we're really going to see a different wave because i don't think a 10 year old whiskey from a lot of these craft distillers is going to taste like the 10 years that we've had from heritage brands before so yeah because be a lot of the craft are using pot stills and different fermentation you know unique fermentations and then obviously in new hampshire it's a 
a different aging environment than we're used to in Kentucky, Tennessee, Indiana. So yeah, there's all those factors that are going to give all of them their own unique flavor profiles. So, what if it I makes think, it darker there in New Hampshire? Uh, probably. It's windy See, there. I think like, it's, it's a windy environment. I think Mount Washington's like the windiest place in the U.S. or something. There you go. Just throw some barrels and see what wind can do to it. It does a lot of magic on Willits Hill. It's yeah. windy as hell up there. It's uh, breeze aged is what a, we'll call it. Breeze aged. Yeah. Coming it's, soon. It's, it's not tornado. It's just just a, a gentle breeze. Gust. Gale force winds. Gale force winds. <laughs> <laughs> so I've got two of them here and they're all for Frank August. And they are excited to announce the, the successional release of their cask strength single barrel program, as well as the highly anticipated second release of their acclaimed case study program. Very early, Frank August established a philosophy to reconsider how America's native spirit is defined and perceived by challenging the established status quo of the industry. This was further reflected in how the brand identified their picks for their following up release of the single barrel by hand selecting 15 exceptional barrels of six year one, sorry, six year one month Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. With the assistance of two of the most respected master distillers and master blenders in the industry, Denny Potter and Jane Bowie, both former people of Maker's Mark. The most notable difference in this year's release is that each barrel was selected has an additional full year of maturity, bottled again at six years, one month, ranging from around uh, 114.6 proof to 125 point proof for single barrel releases. These are going to be also $130 a piece. They're also proud to introduce their case study number two, which is their Exo PX Brandy Cask Finished. 10 beautifully rare brandy casks from Case Study 02 were finished and were first filled in 1992 with very old Pedro Zimenez for 17 years. They were then dumped and immediately refilled with extra old Pedro Zimenez from 1940. Jimenez. Jimenez. Sorry. I see an X and I'm like, z, 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 z. Maybe, it, maybe it is Zimenez. I don't know. Zimenez. You're from Bardstown. I know I can't read well, but you're from Barza. I don't know how much shit you can really give me. I don't right know. I, I just came from, I was in Spain last year. And that's, oh, I feel like, like they like, said him. Barza, him, but... him is. <laughs> but you got to say it like you know how to speak Spanish. Yeah, so, I don't. So if, if you were from Spain, how would you say that? Spanglish. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> we're going to say Pedro Jimenez <laughs> from 1948 for an additional 13 years. So 30 years of considered and incomparable aging before they made their way into the hands of Frank August in Kentucky. Quote, still wet, they were immediately filled with the hand-selected barrels from Frank August's Exceptional Library of Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. And from there, they were tasted every 30 days for an undisclosed amount of time until each barrel reached their ideal sensory and flavor profile. The SRP for Case Study 02 is $170. I'm interested. I, I like brandy finish, cognac finish, Armagnac. So this would be right up my alley. XOPX brandy. Yeah. There's a lot and going on there. And it, if you were from Barca, you probably would call it Jimenez, as you said. Jimenez. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I've had their other case, the Mizanara. I was a big fan of that. Um, and the single barrels were great. Frank August just does a pretty solid job all around and beautiful packaging. I mean, it's like one of the cleanest, beautiful bottles out on the shelf. I mean, so. And you'll hear an episode from them here in a few weeks as well. So there's going to be up on up on the queue. You'll hear all about Frank August and some of the background there, too. But I want to try that. Brandy one. Jonathan, if you're listening, send us one. We're, we we love Brandy. That's right. I mean, I love Brandy. I like Copper and Kings around here. That's We should probably talk to them soon, too. Except uh, Corbell Brandy. It's kind of weird. You don't like Corbell? No, it's all right. It's just like overly sweet. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of... They're, they drink a shit ton of it in Wisconsin when I was Oh, there. that's that's true. Well, Wisconsin, they they make their old fashions with Brandy and... And they make it, them weird. It's like, I, well, here's... They're, they're like, do you want your old fashioned sweet, sour, or... Something and I was like, I don't know, normal. Just I just want an old fashioned, normal one. This is this is where we get in trouble with a lot of our Wisconsin. I listeners. know, sorry. It happened last time when we claimed that they were damning the old fashioned, and they're like, Oh no, no, it's fine, it's fine. And then I I've just learned that it's just one of those things. It's it's kind of like going into, let's say, you know, you're like you're an SEC fan, you're going into Bulldogs territory, and you know, in Georgia, just. You know, don't be loud and proud of the other teams. Like, just just go ahead and just like be like, hey, I'm just here to have fun. Just embrace Georgia. Yeah, yeah. just yeah, be like, we're 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 bulldogs at the end of the day. That's we're all bulldogs. We're bulldogs. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So this one gets back into the world of celebrity whiskeys. So Grammy winning multi platinum superstar Michael Bublé oh, God. Uh, announces the launch of Fraser and Thompson. 
his new whiskey that sounds brand fancy. in partnership. Well, I say this, but hold your horses here a little bit. His new whiskey brand in partnership with a longtime friend and award-winning master distiller and blender, Paul Serka. So this not even it's not even a bourbon. It's not even a rye. It's what they call North American whiskey. And this is a first for the whiskey category brought to the market by the fast-growing spirits incubator, West Brands. So blends and bottles of Canadian whiskeys, along with Kentucky bourbon, was all done in Bartstown, Kentucky. This creative blending process was curated by award-winning master distiller and blender, uh, Paul Serka, who's also the co-founder of the brand, with uh, also with Buble, and sets Fraser and Thompson apart um, by blending and bottling. Uh, they do everything at no place other than Heaven Hill. The brand is sold in 750, 750 mLs at, for 42% ABV, which is what, 84, 84. <laughs> 4% proof? Thank you. I'm not good at math. You know that. Uh, but it has an SRP of only $30. Okay. The plan is to support the brand with an integrated marketing campaign to be announced soon, assuming that Michael has enough time within his schedule of touring, squeezing in midday naps, and nodding his perfect bow tie. And the whiskey <laughs> is a triumphant. Did they put that on the press release? They literally put this. I thought I was going to say it comes with his Christmas album. Oh, it um, keeps going, by the way. So the whiskey is a triumph, an achievement, and the product of years of hard work and collaborative efforts involving dozens of beverage alcohol, beverage alcohol professionals. Yet, we haven't received much more than a winking emoji from Mr. Buble when we asked how we should advertise it. It strikes us as supremely ironic that a guy with such an extensive catalog of music has mastered radio silence. <laughs> That's definitely a chat GBT. Uh, I, I feel conflicted about that press release. <laughs> yeah. Are you shitting me? I know. Okay. So a, here's the first thing. It's like, are I they took making this, fun of Bublé or are they trying to... I took this press release from three pages down to what you just heard. Right? It was insanely long. But... What got to me was those sticking points, and that's why I put them in there. Was like one, Michael Buble has a has a whiskey. I have nothing wrong with Michael Buble. His, yeah, I figured he'd be like a gin person. Gimlet the to, the Christmas <laughs> albums speak to my heart. I will always listen to Michael Buble there. And then it goes into a uh, we have a creative blending process. They didn't say what that creative blending process was, but they are not even going into bourbon. They're not going to rye. They're going to the boo rye. They're just going to call it a North American whiskey. Well, right. They must have a lot of fans in Canada and in the U.S. I don't know. Yes, I I will go ahead and give them a thumbs up. Thirty dollars, right? So hard to hard to beat that. It's worth giving it a shot. But the other thing was, it just felt like so disconnected. It felt very anti celebrity. When you say like, oh, well, Michael just doesn't have time for this. Like, oh, he's he's busy taking cat naps and dealing with his bow tie well, and trying to figure out, you know, how to, you know, he was just going to send us a winking emoji on how we're going to advertise this. Is like, but I, is, but is, maybe, that, is, that, is that like, is that the hook? Like, am I supposed to be waiting? Am I supposed to be wanting more? Well, to be fair, I, I would assume a lot of celebrity brands don't get taken seriously because they're celebrity brands. Now, the diehard fans will go buy that one-time purchase, you know, just to have a collector's item. But to build a brand, you know, where people consistently buy it, you probably have to have some disconnect from Buble and the, the product, and you need the product to stand on its own. So maybe that's the intention, but the way they wrote it was kind of strange. <laughs> yeah, the way they wrote it was just like, Michael's here, but he's not here. <laughs> yeah, it almost seems like a dear diary where like each paragraph was probably I know you said you could sit down, you know, a different entry over the course of like a year of someone who started working for this company and now is like on the it's outs. Just their, it's just their text thread. Dear <laughs> diary. <laughs> Michael Buble is fantastic. And then, you know, a year and a half later, it's like, dear diary. This is the end of Michael Buble. <laughs> I hate Michael Buble. <laughs> Him and his stupid bow ties. <laughs> What I oh. found fascinating though is that they said he was at Heaven Hill and they that they yeah. were allowed to say that and whatnot. So that, that and it's ironic. About a month ago, I got a text from someone having said Michael Bublé is here, and I was like, oh, I just must be on like a tour or something. But now it all makes sense. Oh, I mean, really? They, yeah. They might not be able to say it, but if this person's that disgruntled, you know, <laughs> they <laughs> send out guns a blazing. The text are just just uh, just blew up. That just blew up. So. <laughs> It is funny if this is just like a play to get back at him because <laughs> he br broke up with him. <laughs> it's not even Michael Bublé. It's actually a different singer. It's Josh Groban. There you go. It's Josh Groban. 
Oh, well, I love it. Uh, by the way, if you're listening to this, we, we're still fans of you, Michael Pouple, so we're not going to say anything. I doubt he's listening. Yeah. I'm feeling good right really? now. He know. doesn't have time to worry about his own whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about a whiskey podcast. He's going to give us a mean face emoji <laughs> back. <laughs> oh, no. He's going to be like the double horns emoji. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I hope, I hope, I hope, I honestly, I hope he sees us post it on our social, on Burp Pursuit's Instagram, and he puts in a comment of like the devil emoji. I, I will, I'll lose my shit. That would be incredible. Yeah. We'll reshare it. Thank you, Michael. All right. So the last two we're going to talk about is actually all based out of Jim Beam. And so this first one is Knob Creek. They're announcing a partnership. And this is, by the way, you, you know that people, they do all kinds of collaborations. You know, people have done them with McLaren. They've done them with Bentley. Done with Rolex. Buble. Never. <laughs> it's done with Buble. <laughs> but never have we done one for skillets. So when you first read this, I thought you said Skittles. Like, and, but then I was like, no, I think he said Skillets. But I thought he said Skittles. And I was like, this is not the rock band Skillet. You were talking about Skillets. Like a little, like like a cast cast iron iron fucking Skillet. Like the Lodge one. No, it's not Lodge. You see like Gatlinburg. Hold hold your, because apparently it's not Lodge. This is Smith, Smithy Ironware. That's who it is. And so they are a premium manufacturer of artisanal cookware to create a limited edition, high quality cast iron skillet. And to celebrate the re-release of Knob Creek 18 year old, the skillet is seasoned 18 times, which is 15 times more than Smithy's traditional skillets. <laughs> Y'all keep holding it back. So this creates a natural nonstick cast iron with reach, with, sorry, with rich, deep <laughs> copper color. <laughs> I can't. I can't. And sorry, an easy going. to clean finish. Savoring the aging process, Knob Creek transforms as it matures in its oak barrels, and cast iron's performance also improves as layers of seasoning build with <laughs> each use. Aged twice as long as flagship bourbon, Knob Creek 18-year-old is a complex yet balanced bourbon with deep flavors of caramelized oak and sweet vanilla with a warm finish, just like the deep flavors that are developed when cooking with a cast iron skillet. So Knob Creek 18-year-old has exceptional flavor. But for those looking to experience the artisanal craftsmanship, the Knob Creek and Smithy 18 seasoned cast iron skillet set is just in here time for the holidays. Starting on October 20th, the set will be available in limited quantities at their website for $300. Each set features a limited edition 12-inch, 18-times seasoned cast iron skillet with two custom Clayton and Crew leather coasters and a Knob Creek-inspired recipe. And Knob Creek 18 year is also available in limited quantities at nationwide retailers with an SRP of one hundred and seventy dollars for their bottle. Can so you, you get, can pay you can pay double and get the skill, or you just pay one hundred and eighty dollars and get the bottle. But it's not it's not seasoned with the Knob Creek. It's completely unrelated. Right? No, I'm sure it's just like oil or some shit. Okay, it's canola oil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that that's I, I thought I heard it all in the Buble press release, <laughs> but that that one takes the cake. I mean that's. Well, give me the URL. I'm going to refresh my browser when they release this so I can get a first dip. So uh, it's, it's so it's October already. 20th. It's already out there. Oh, shit. I probably so, missed it. I, I, I don't know. Knob Creek and the Smithy 18 times seasoned cast iron skillet. I thought I'd seen it all when it came to collabs, but this is a new one. Oh, man. People just love stories, huh? I mean, some people just, you know, you want to look for a reason for anything to do stuff and so that they come together. I mean, probably it's three. I mean, the shipping on that damn thing's got to be ash. Those damn cast irons are heavy as hell. They're ash- yeah. I mean, there's at least probably 20 pounds in there. Yeah. Well, well, I'll uh, get one and see how much better my convert see compared to my, convert. my other, uh, my lodge. Well, uh, cast iron. I, put it this way I haven't cooked on cast irons for a while, but I do have one. They're great for steaks. Oh, man. But mm. in the point is like, you don't like, you need them. Like old and like you don't need want you don't, yeah you times. need yeah you don't need them you nobody wants to buy a new one like it, the best thing you can do is like find your grandma's that she's used like four thousand times and that shit's still good and all you do is you just to season them you just kind of just pour some oil on it kind of let it heat off and then maybe rub it a little bit but never use soap that's all I've heard just don't use soap ever yep. ever oh, ever just use Knob Creek to season it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what I was waiting for there and go. it has to be 18 year. 18 year yeah uh, they should probably put that be like yeah you just use Knob Creek 18 year to season at the end of the day yep so this last one here is over the course of the past year the James B Beam Distilling Company and Freddie No have released the Hardens Creek Kentucky series which is a three part series of Kentucky straight bourbon that aimed to showcase the terroir and how it can impact the final flavor of a liquid 
the true example of exploration, experimentation, and each ex- each expression was laid down at the same time 17 years ago with the ma- same mash bill and production process. The only difference was the location of aging, and each expression is named after the James B. Bean Distilling Company's campus on which it was matured. So you had Hardin's Creek Claremont, which was released in June 23, followed by the Frankfurt release back in August 23, and finally the Boston release in September 23. And now they're releasing the Hardin's Creek Kentucky Series Trio that features all three 200 ml bottles, one of Claremont, one of Frankfurt, one of Boston. And this allows them to, unless anybody that buys them, the experience, expressions of each side by side and discover the nuances of the landscape and how the campus affects the flavor profile. This has an SRP of $170 and can be purchased on reservebar.com and select markets. Well, we kind of predicted once Four Roses start release that others would follow, but this is cool because you can have all three, you know, side by side and, and, that way you don't. A lot of people are chasing for one, just trying to find right. them, and now you're like, okay, well, well we now go. you don't have to spend, you know, hundred because they're normally 170 individually at 750, right? And so you don't have to have three 170 dollar bottles. You yeah, get you offers. lose lose a little bit, but gosh, the small. I love the small sizes. Big fan. Me too. I'm not <laughs> from a production standpoint. Yeah, you're. That's why you're COO. Yeah, I know. It's like I'm the one that's to figure that out. Yep. But we'll, we will get it figured out. I have a feeling it will come one day for Pursuit Spirits. Yep. That's a good way to wrap it up, boys. This was a fun one. Thanks Thank for you. joining, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, cool. Well, great. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're, we're going to let you to, like sign off or something, right? Yeah, now. well, you got you to gotta let me know that one next time. <laughs> yeah. No, so I, where, tell them where they can follow you, where they can, because he's got great photos, does great reviews, Band and Bourbon, right? Absolutely. You can find me on Instagram at Band and Bourbon. Uh, I don't know where else you can find me. I'm doing stuff on Sealbox. I'm a drink, behind the scenes. Drink Sealbox, with, right? Drink Sealbox. I'm behind the scenes with Stuff Pursuit Spirits and... You'll hear me over there at Behind the Pursuit podcast. He's the one that comes up with these dumb ideas to get me to lick a barrel and stuff. But anyways. Hey, at least you got the splinters out of your tongue. So yeah. I'm glad to see that happen. I still got the, the bumps, though. No, I'm kidding. That's okay. That's okay. But that is going to be it for this week in bourbon. Cheers, everybody. We'll see you next week. Toodles. Adios. Adios.